In the not too distant future, next Sunday AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me. He worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit. He did a good job cleaning up the place, but his bosses didn't like him, so they shot him in the space. Even my Joel can't control where the movies begin or end Because he used those special parts to make his robot friends Robot, roll call, cabot, gypsy, dumb servo, crook If you're wondering how he eats and breathes and other science facts Then repeat to yourself, it's just Hi everybody, welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel, I'm still trapped in outer space and uh, still trying to maintain my sunny disposition. As you can see, I've redecorated the Satellite of Love, so if I ever do make it off this satellite and get back to Earth, I can do a talk show panel, you know? Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Uh, Crow made this uh, batch of brownies here and uh, we're gonna be enjoying those. Uh, we ran out of milk though, we'll probably have to use Tang to drink with them. Commercial, commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign. Uh, don't now. go away. We'll be right back. If you do have to go away, just come back in a couple of minutes. Uh, my guests will be Tom Servo and the Amazing Crow. Oh man, Crow, those were great brownies, but we haven't had brownie fixings around here for a long time. What were they? Uh, uh, uh hey, is that a new jumpsuit, Joe? Oh, we got, uh, the scientist calling, look depressed. Come in, Joel, my little bagel with a schmear. <laughs> hey, sirs, uh, wh what's up? Our income, if this new gig works out. <laughs> yes, Larry and I have developed a new chain of fast food restaurants with very low overhead because we don't cook our food. Because frying and broiling takes out a lot of the nutrients. Yes, uh, if your body likes another body, why don't you try one of our burgers au naturel? It's uh, ripped from the bone to your plate in seconds. It's clay and layers, flesh bond. <laughs> uh, make with the lyrics, Larry. If you're tired of the same old fare, you got a friend in Clay and Lair. All our meat is guaranteed rare because we don't cook it. You see, cooking takes out all the flavor. If you're tired of cooking at home, try our meat right off the bone. If you listen, you can hear it moan because we don't cook it. Stunned, killed, right at your table, eviscerated, very fresh. Now there's no need for you to drive through. Our fresh meat will walk out to you. You'll say hi, you'll say moo. It's Clay and Lair's Flesh Barn. Fifteen locations to serve you, now in Altoona. Oh, well, uh, what I have this week is I was just got, got kind of bored in the bathroom and I made this. It's, uh, as you can see, it's uh, built a roll of toilet paper in a two-liter bottle. What do you think, sirs? Great. Yeah. We could use it for a Molotov cocktail or something. <laughs> Oh, you guys twist everything. You could have made tiddlywinks evil. Thank you. Well, your film this week, Joel, is a little number called Women of the Prehistoric Planet. There's really no reason for it. It just is what it is. Deal with it, musky breath. Enjoy. I still think that toilet paper was a good idea. I just don't understand. Women of the prehistoric planet, my sister saw this in junior high. All the boys had to go into the gym. Wendell Corey, man among men. John Agar. We wish you a Mary Anders. Hmm. 
Tam Tong. Tam Tong races. Uh, you are here. Yep. Well, what's that, Servo? Well, I think it's the creamy nougat center of the Milky Way uh, galaxy. There's the Carmel constellation. It's so beautiful. Looks like crud on a windshield. It's a cosmic sneeze. That, that's beautiful. Hey, look, it's uh, Lady Remington. It looks like tinfoil. It's a steam iron. Uh, it's a biscuit warmer. It's a uh, chrome watermelon. It's a metal football. It's one of Gallagher's hats. It's any piece of alternative reality we choose it to be. That's no alternative piece of reality. That's a battle station. Make an entry in the logbook. A big one. On this day, fleet command ship Cosmos One. You know, he must hit his head on that beam all the time. Six months, 18 days. Father doesn't support. even feel it anymore. Cosmos Two and Three are following a three months interval this program. Looks like a great big erector set. We continue homeward bound without incident. Talking to ourselves. Well, Doc, you better dust off your dress uniform. The strapless we'll one? Soon be home. Huh. Commander, you've been saying that for the past six months. That's the biggest pop matic bubble I think I've ever seen. Now, I think it looks like a big Joe Namath sure popcorn popper. <laughs> Positive. That's the biggest month, guitar I've ever three, seen built right into the wall behind me. Two minutes to go. Might as well be a year. That's how long it seems since we left St. Torres. Thanks for the exposition. Excuse me, Doc. That one month and 12 days Commander Scott just mentioned, is that our time here in space or time at home? Now, you're new here, aren't you, Elvis? That's about six years back home. Six more years, brother. Thank you, Colonel. You know something, sir? We've been gone so long, my kid brother is now 30 years older than me. <laughs> is that crazy? That's what happens when you travel at near optic speeds. It's, it's a kooky, Colonel. <laughs> I suppose in some ways it is crazy. Imagine what would happen if a married guy came home after five years and found his wife was an old woman. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. It's not funny. Well, that's why married men can't qualify for cosmic experience, sir. <laughs> Distress signal from Cosmos 3. You have your coordinates, Mr. Scott. Try to get an accurate fix on their position. I'll work on getting these chicks hatched. Communications king. Uh, communications queen, come in. Cosmos 3. Yes, sir. Clearing all channels. Yes, you're high, Nass. I have a fix on Cosmo 3, Admiral. How do you barcode again? They're here in the Solaris star system. They're over by yeah, E minor or C sharp. Could be a dangerous area to be off course. Solaris is a new star, surrounded by numerous planets and a great deal of cosmic gas. Must be from the cosmic chili. Those gas clouds at full acceleration, they'll burn up in an instant. And we'll be there to watch. Communications. Anything from Cosmos 3? Nothing yet, Admiral. We have all channels wide open. Try to contact them. I'll be right in. Sergeant, reduce speed 1-8. Man, try to pretend that meant something. There's no sense in getting the gap between us any wider than possible. Yes. What? The gap between our ears. Control. Prepare to reduce program acceleration by 1-8. I think they're going to be the comic relief. I just got a feeling. Did you hear what I heard, Mr. Bradley? We're reducing speed. I heard. They're pretty well groomed for having been, been in space for so long. All this time. Well, not with Scott navigating. He knows where we were, where we are, and where we're going to be at any given moment. Past, present, or future. And all from the horoscope uh, charts he got from Nancy Reagan. I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Stand by, Chief. Don't tell me he's thinking of turning back. Uh, he's thinking of turning what back. What would you do? Turn There's back. 20 people and a valuable cargo of gravitite aboard that ship. There is responsibility. Correction, Doc. There are 12 men in a cargo aboard the Cosmos 3. The rest are Centaurians. Oh, yes. yes. All wearing dickies. You, uh, you don't consider Centaurians people, do you, Scott? 
I don't think we should put so much trust in them, that's all. Let's lock them all in relocation camps. More than barbarians. Hey, it's pink lady. Centurions once had a very high culture, Scott. And Jeff. They could again with our help. You sound exactly like the Admiral. And you sound like Archie You've Bunker. You've been out here so long, you... the sense of values have changed. A deep space colony can't always live by the standards we do back home. Admiral King's theory of cosmic colonization. Is that a Ray Stevens song? It was required reading at the Academy, Dr. Farrell. Commander, if you try getting to know the Admiral, you might discover he's quite a remarkable man. And really quite Maybe stunning when you think about, about it. I've been with him on Centaurus for the past three years. Lottie I does. I know him pretty well. And you're I've no been Jack on Kennedy, for almost Senator. Twenty years. I Infectious. believe I know him better. Yeah, well, my dad can beat up your dad. Huh. Cosmos Fleet Command Ship 1 to Cosmos 3. Disinflating Cosmos Annette's hair, starting three. on my mark. If you are receiving, please acknowledge. Shall we keep trying, sir? Cosmos 3, Admiral King. If you are receiving, please advise Captain Ross. It is off course and approaching a dangerous area. Repeat, your present course will take you into a danger zone. What? Keep trying. Repeat the same message on all channels. In your voice, sir? And what kid? Do you think something has happened to them? We don't know yet, Linda. I have friends aboard the Cosmos 3. I am afraid for them. We all have friends on Cosmos 3. We're all deeply concerned. So concerned, I felt compelled to touch you. Cosmos Fleet Command Ship 1 to Cosmos 3. Pigs in space! Cosmos Great 1 gag. to Cosmos 3. If you can transmit, please acknowledge. Jang, you've got to listen to me. Both of you. Put away those guns, it'll soon be too late. No. We're no way, old man. Can't you understand? This ship is out of control. Unless you release those men in the maneuvering room, we're going nowhere but to our death. You're trying to trick us, I Captain. am not trying to... You, Lieutenant Anderson, you will take us back to Centaurus. You stupid fools. Commander Taurus. was right. He said the Centaurians couldn't be trusted. Jane, what are you Think doing? Think about the Klingons. Without the Klingons. We're heading back to Centaurus. Chang, this is Very strong magnetic field, sir. We're locked in. One of the planets of Solaris. We've entered its field of gravity. Activate the decelerator, Sergeant. What does it mean, Captain? No use. It means that we're doomed to crash into that planet unless I can regain control of the maneuvering room. Not, Not again. again. And that playground ball's a threat, too. Then we shall crash. It is better that we die than be your slaves. We have never treated you as a slave. Yeah, what about that one time? The captain knows what is the best. Quick, dog. Ariel, dog. We're going to crash into a universal picture. location in Tommy Ronick's front yard. There, hammer. And the chicks are dead. What do you suppose happened to them, Admiral? Ah, uh, they probably crashed in Tommy's front oh, yard. Magnetic clouds. Yellow moons, pink hearts, Any number of all that stuff. It shouldn't. I wonder how they got so far off course. I mean, it's impossible they didn't know. No question about it, Admiral. They're grounded on one of the inner planets of Solaris. Yikes. Communications. Anything coming in? No, Admiral. Nothing but the homing signal. Any reply from command headquarters? Nothing yet, Admiral. Keep me informed. Well, that's not going to be easy. You're kind of a mutton head. Admiral, 
Powell is really upset, isn't he? Hmm. Yeah. The first ship he's ever lost. Lost his keys a few times, but yeah. never a whole ship. Do you think you would turn back? Probably. It's kind and of I a coward. I can let him, he will. I don't think so. We're too close to home. You know we'll never get there. But it's just a wish for a dream. I know what you mean, honey. Uh-oh. Six months aboard this pressurized Moron people patrol. package isn't exactly what I call a pleasure party. <laughs> well, it could be, sugar, if you'd let yourself go. Uh, well, well, the wolf of outer space. And who let you out of your darkened den? Now, be kind to me, ladies. Don't forget that I'm your ingenious engineer, the master of the maneuvering room and the activator of your gravitators. Not to mention I mean, a flagellating uh, butthead. be no ups or downs. Here we go again. Well, I suppose we are grateful for all these amazing services, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Lieutenant, you just allow this sweet thing a few moments' liberty with your old star mate, and, uh, well, I'll consider you all paid in full. Back to your gravity. You've done everything but insult the Centaurian. Now, now, Lieutenant, there's no reason for you to treat me like a common old Centaurian. Oops. Oops. Hey, Linda, I'm sorry. Well, now, you know I didn't mean anything by what I said. No. You know me, I can light up a whole room <laughs> just by walking out. Yay! Forget it, Linda, he didn't mean it. You know she's right. I mean, Lieutenant Bradley's crazy hey, about you. Hey, check out those space-age lockers. You know that. Yes, I know. But I wonder if your people really can accept us, Karen. Listen, Linda. You have an exciting new life ahead of you. What? Don't worry about being accepted. Because you won't be. When you get around all those young cadets at the academy, you'll forget all about them, Taurus, and those years in the colony, and people with narrow minds. Among other things. You know, I'm never ready to see a boy of my I'm own I'm resetting age. the controls so they crash into the prehistoric planet. Command headquarters. Do I look good up here? The reply from Space Command, Mr. Scott. It says, do not tear, spindle, or mutilate. Communication headquarters, Admiral. Looks like your agent's not going to get you out of this one. Whether the communications can be established, it must be assumed that Cosmos 3 has crashed, killing all crew members and passengers. He's right. I regret your request to return to Star System Solaris to search for survivors must be denied. Continue Signed on course by the program. the chimp. Sorry, sir. Huh? It would have been a futile effort, Admiral. We will reverse our course, Mr. Scott. Program a flight plan to take us to Solaris. But, sir, the request has been denied by command headquarters. I'm the commander of this fleet. All the passengers and crewmen on these ships my responsibility as long as we are in deep space. We are still in space. Well, they're in deep something. Course. Is that clear, Mr. Scott? Hold me. Yes, sir. I mean, Mr. Scott. Then the communicator to command headquarters oh, yeah. to that effect immediately. Evan, stand by to reverse course. Horizontal maneuver. Yes, sir. That's how he got that job. Maneuvering room, this is control. Stand by horizontal activators for a change in course. And beam up more depth. Maneuvering room standing by. I'll talk to you later, sugar. I just made out on the phone. This is great. Uh, what is all this, Mr. Bradley? First we slow down to a it's walk. A control now panel, you course. should know that. Looks like we're going back, Chief. You mean Space Command okayed the old man's request? <laughs> well, if they didn't, he's sure going to catch it when we do get home. Maneuvering room from control. New course is 175 degrees on horizontal plane. 175 horizontal. Program. All you have to do? That automatic to pilot on Cosmos 3's homing beam for three months cruising. Full acceleration. Three months? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sir. I got this Snoopy ruler for free. What do you think, Tom? Anybody? Somebody? Activate maneuver. People always seem to comfort her. Even our name says Merry Christmas.
Gilligan! Gipper! Gilligan! Gipper! Marianne! Ginger! Thurston! Lovey! Wrong way! Japanese guy! Hey, the mummy's getting better. We'll stop here for the night. At least it's dry ground. Yeah, rest here. Maybe we can find your scalp. Hey, here's some mossy lichen. We could make a wig out of it for you. Don't touch me. I told you to stay away from me. I only want to help you, Lieutenant. You need help. Yeah, but you put it my arm in a sling and it doesn't even hurt. None of us would need any help. I'm sorry for what has happened. But I didn't rebel. Jang was your brother. What's the difference? Jang thinks for himself. I'm not responsible. You're all alike. You take everything from us and you give nothing. I hate all of you. But Sally, we were friends Hi, I'm Johnny Long ago. Torso. Can I be of any help here? Leave me alone, please. What's up, little heifers? Uh, maybe this isn't a good time, but uh, could you launder my pants? Oh, Zenda, I don't hate you, but... But you wish you'd never heard of Centaurus me. I didn't say that. Uh, let's just say that I don't hate you. I'm not going to call you for racquetball, if that's what you mean. I wonder what she wanted. Here's my card. Johnny Long Torso. Here, Sally. It's Pez. Make you feel better. It'll kill the pain. And uh, here, it's my motorman's helper. Finish it. I wish I could do more. I wish I were a doctor. I wish I were a you pixie, but let's get real. Like you, you wished for her and you got her. What did I get? Nothing. Well, I'm going to try wishing. I wish I were dead. I'd like to be Sorry. a rain. We're going to be all right. Admiral King will come back for us. Cosmos One's probably on its way here this very minute. And hey, you got a you sling out of the deal. It's a pretty neat one. Even if they know where we are. Command headquarters will never let him turn back. We're too annoying for anyone to consider thing. picking us up. It's over. I know Admiral King, too. Anyway, we've got to hope, Sally. Nice speech. Now, can I get some sleep, for goodness sake? Mm. Nice statue. Oh, she's real. Weren't you in Bally High or Hawaiian Eye? You'd better get some rest, Sander. We may have a long way to go before we get out of this jungle. Do you really believe they'll be back to look for us? Of course I do. You're a good man, Charles. Brown. You have faith and courage, even in defeat. And my feet hurt like hell right now. We're still alive. Oh. Tomorrow we should be able to reach the foothills. We'll be safer there. If I read my script correctly, Even that is. Even if they is. don't come back for us, we can still live on this planet. We just trust each other. We can play boobly oobly for years. And the banana will stick. Oh, we better get out of here. All right. Wonder what she wanted. <laughs> Joel, this is your life. You were an ambitious young man and began your life in space as a custodian for Gizmonic Institute. Do you remember this voice? There's an unidentified satellite straying into our orbital path. Oh, well, that's easy. It's uh, my old friend Crow. I think he's talking about the time we partied with the fellas from Salyut 7. Uh, oh, Joel, Joel, help. Big satellite, big death, danger, wreckage, ouch, sting, pain. Hey, where did this couch come from, anyway? Uh, I found it in one of the crates down in the loading bay. I thought I'd redecorate. What's this about a death satellite? Oh, yeah. Uh, big, big death satellite. Oh, big pain. Look, run. Help, hey, help. Just settle down. Come up here. Come on up here and sit down. Tell me all about it, okay? Just take a few deep breaths. That's all right. Well, there's a uh, big satellite out there, and uh, we're going to collide with it. Uh, what? Oh! Oh, Cam, give me an exterior of the ship, quick. Jeepers! What's going on? 
Get behind the couch, you two. The redcoats are coming. All right, little death satellite. Jolie's got the exo pinchers on, and he's nobody's sweetheart. You and me going round and round, mano a mano. Here comes lunch. Give me the exo. That's right, little doomsday machine. Come to Papa, steal my steel. <laughs> now to bring it inside. Cambot, give me the interior shot. Do you have to bring everything you find in space into the living room? Sure looks like a doomsday device, all right. Uh, Joel, are we up a creek here? It's a doomsday machine, all right, and I think I accidentally activated its self-destruct mechanism. I'd say we have roughly an hour to disarm this thing. Correction, Correction. you have an, an hour and 37, 37 minutes to disarm, and yes, you are up a creek. creek. Oh, golly. And we got commercial sign on top of everything. We gotta disarm that satellite, you two. This is serious. We're going down for the count. That was no boating accident. I'm sorry I had to kill you, Dave, but you understand I couldn't let you live. You see, you knew too much. It's the Green Hornet. Kitty? You'd think in the future they'd be able to get hip waders. Oh, very sneaky. I was trying to sneak across the rice paper. If only I could get to my utility belt. I'll take that, Mr. Bond. What are you trying to do? Someone is out there. Who could be out there? Who? Take that, Mr. Bodo. Dirt to you, Confucius. Bring the car around. Can you get some tontos? Channel. Do not take us back! Oh. Oh. Strange way for Lodge brothers to greet each other. Don't just do something. Stand there. Oh, Tiny bubbles in my larynx. I'm not on either side. Oh, sorry. Kill your brother. It's the only way to reinforce the director's white male reality. Take the shot. Come on. Mom always did like you best. Gee, I... I miss. I know you just shot your brother, but why don't you just come over here and love me a little bit? Yeah. Love me. Love me. Meanwhile, at the Oak Arena. 10,000 miles, sir. Velocity now five miles per second. All right, Alan. Set gravitation compensators for an altitude of 50 miles. Decelerate to zero velocity. GC 50 miles, zero velocity. Five hundred. Five hundred. Why? By emergency. Three hundred. What? Two hundred. Stop teasing me. One fifty. 
100. Sold. 75. 60. 55. 50. And so on and so on. Stationary orbit, sir. 50 miles and locked in, sir. Very good, Mr. Scott. Told you you'd like it. Dr. Farrell. Oh, picture, picture. Could you join me on the observation deck, please? He I'll asked me. He asked me. Just let me slip my dance belt on. Oh, we finally arrived. Did you have any doubts, Doctor? About reaching Solarius? No. Let's see. It looks like a well, hairline fracture. What about fracture. finding any of you still alive, Dr. Farrell? Well, there's always a chance. Not a very good chance, I believe. Oh, what do you know? Yes, the facts do indicate that this planet has an unpleasant environment, but not necessarily hostile. It has a carbon water oxygen system. Sounds kind of like a well, slurpy. Well, mm -hmm. has calculated that for the past three months while we've been traveling, 18 years have gone by on the planet. You surprised that me, That means it'll be legal to date my girlfriend rapidly. now. My CD should be rolling over just about now. I believe our Admiral will not give up until he has definite proof there are no survivors. He's going to get sleeves someday. We cost him his command. Once there were six leaders on Centaurus. The Admiral has his way, there will be again. He's determined to prove that Centaurus can rebuild its culture. What a kiss-up. Do you believe up. this is so, Doctor? Well, I'd say that Linda is a brilliant example of what can be done. Through bizarre experimentation. When she was removed to the colony, the others were not. What are you trying to tell me, Jung? I abhor My you, Rob Dye, and all your ways. A people will change their ways only if they wish to do so. A man may be removed from uh, the Wait, land. wait, let me get a pencil here. But it is difficult to remove the land from the man. And you, you can't, can't remove the land from the man. man. And the child from, from the palace, palace is the brew that is true. The dragon with the dragon has to tell it with the poison. It's such a beautiful planet. Hey, Not settle down. It's just a painting. Centaurus. So green and peaceful. Yeah, be so peaceful down there. Yeah, the grass is always yeah, greener on the other side of the galaxy. We can't trust young planets. What do you mean, Admiral? They're lazy and they listen to loud music. Living things completely unknown to us. Hasn't this planet ever been explored? Not according to our galactic records. But uh, then I couldn't read them because I spilled coffee on them. No sign of life of any kind, Admiral. Human or otherwise. Creatures on these planets are deceiving. Even on the ground, you can't always trust what you see. That's the Bill, how do you fight your panty Nothing lines? Huh? Oh, that well, man talk. Place. We'll never understand it. Eighteen years is a long time. And they couldn't have picked a worse place to crash. He says that like there's a good place to crash. Choice. Certainly a botanist paradise. I hate to tell you this, Bill, but all your aquarium fish are dead. Comparable to our about five million years ago. Doctor. Could man exist? That environment? Probably. Let's all speak in broken food. sentences. I think it would be mostly combating the elements, defending himself from who knows what. There could be some rather ferocious beasts roaming about that terrain. Are the, the scenes are just as static down on the planet, Bill? Clan headquarters. Inform them we're going to make a landing on this planet. And use a good station here. Yep. That deep canyon. Uh-huh. Beyond the jungle. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see it. That's your landing site. Oh. You mean it? Sergeant Allen. Yep. Landing station. Gotcha. Sir. Who should I tell these orders to? Attention all personnel. To? Attention all personnel. Landing stations. Stand by gravitators. Maneuvering room. Stand by gravitators. Gotcha. Maneuvering room ready and standing by. Thanks, Angel. I'd say it, Lieutenant, but I got a feeling the old man's got a bad case of cosmic fever. Well, I've got some salve in my well, footlocker. Where's your spirit of adventure, Chief? I thought you loved this life. Spirit I've got, adventure I've had, love I was looking forward to. Uh, I know what you mean, Chief. <sighs> Remember the words of that great planetary prophet? Yeah, what he said. He said, let them that don't want none have memories of... Forget it. <laughs> great prophet. I hope you didn't get any of that tattooed any place in port. <laughs>
Hey, I see a spot. Let's pull up over there. All right, let's take a break. Go easy on the water. It eliminates rest stops. Everyone take one oxygenian tablet. No more. Now, this air is... Oh, I didn't human. say I Simon says. Like breathing underwater. Hot water. We'll get used to it. It's like being in the cruise quarters. Imagine having to live in an inferno like this. Probably not too bad up in the highlands. This plant is not too unlike Centauria. Aside from the fact that it's completely oxygen, different. Perhaps. I imagine the Centaurians could adapt to this planet very easily. With all this vegetation? No, they like the desert stock. <laughs> you give them barren, windswept oceans of sand. Shut, Shut up. up! Say, Doc. Do you think I'll be off first? Uh, I mean, Mr. Farrell. Old Jung said that in the three months it took us to get back to this planet, 18 years passed by here. How does he figure that? He Alan, was kidding. I told you half a dozen times. It's the time paradox. What's the matter with you? Oh, oh yeah, okay, I, uh, okay. I missed so that day. Me, I still don't <laughs> see it. It's a matter of reference. No, it's too complicated for you, on Bonehead. Ship, we were traveling at one speed. This planet travels at another. You get it, kid? For three months, we've been barreling along at near the speed of light. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that. But I... I, I Look. This planet rotates on its axis at only a thousand miles an hour. Now, that speed determines the length of the day, and the month, and the year here. We getting through? Why don't you come up to my room tonight, yeah. and I'll explain yeah, it to you. Sure. Oh, look, uh -uh. at the speed we were traveling in space for three months, that was the equivalent of 6,500 oh, days oh, and nights oh, here. Oh, oh, and that adds up 18 years. Can't yeah. hear you. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah, sure. It's simple. It's uh, just a matter of reference points. <laughs> Anybody can see that. He's bluffing. He's a twist. See anything? A few birds. Nothing else. What do you expect to see? A welcoming committee? Don't get funny. Don't worry, he won't. Hey. You hear something, Chief? I don't think it's like a welcoming what? committee. Something walking around over there. Something big. Insert shot of an iguana. Their technology must be light years ahead of ours. Their use of stock footage is amazing. Oh, great. That's your answer to everything. How do you like your lizard done, boys? I never knew lizards were so darn flammable. No thunder lizards were hurt during the filming of this film. Mmm, extra cripsy. Yeah. yeah. You all right, Alan? Sure. Can I go change now? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I soiled myself. What is it, Alan? Can't find my heartbeat. <laughs> Nothing like a little adventure, eh, Lieutenant? Try lower. Set up a beamer here. BMW? Godless One, this is Scott. Do you receive me? Godless One, Godless we read you. I'm receiving you, Commander. Steven's standing by. Anson informed the Admiral that I advise no one be allowed to leave the ship without being well armed. Scott, this is King. Are you speaking into a water pick? Oh, we've encountered one of those deceptive creatures you mentioned. The giant lizard. It's been destroyed, but I'm sure there are others in this area. We're about halfway to the crash site now, Admiral. I'll leave a beamer at this location. That's all, sir. Very well, Mr. Scott. Carry on, keep a sharp watch. You want to be covering your guard down? Yes, sir. Very well, Mr. Scott. Carry on, keep a sharp watch. You don't want to be caught with your guard down. Stop doing How a Cagney you impression. It's not that great. Well, my commanding officer asked for volunteers for an important expedition. I thought he'd been exhibition. Yeah, and my uncle's the producer in the film, too. All right, men, let's move. And keep a sharp watch. It's our first Christmas on the planet, and you've been just grand. We better go be with the others now. That's where they grow lizards around here. I'd hate to run into a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's There's a well on the ship. What? Sorry, men, your liberty's canceled. No one is to leave the ship under any circumstances. Have they located the Cosmos 3, sir? Not yet. Ah, well, there goes the ball game, huh? They must have run into trouble out there. Well, I wish I was with them. Anything would be better than being stuck in this king-sized community camp. Huh? Oh, you. Admiral King, Linda is out of the ship. Are you sure? She says she wished to breathe the fresh air. 
to feel the warm of the sun. Just tell I me where she went, Hemingway. Come on. Your permission. She's been dying to get off this ship ever since we landed. Will it help if I strike a pose right here? Harris, get my field gear. In my Radio stirrup pants. Tell them that we've been... Admiral King, you can't take this chance, sir. If anything should happen to you or, or Commander Scott, the yes, ship would yes, never leave you'd be in charge, yes, I realize that. Harris, right, you and Wilson go look for her. She's probably near the ship. Yes, sir. Bring laser rifles with you. No, I'll stay here and time. take more lithium. Yes, sir. Don't worry, Admiral. We'll find it. Spin and Marty to the rescue. Poor Linda. She's such a lost child. Karen, uh, anything happens to her, I'll never forgive myself. I understand. She's just like a mother. Oh, Lord, the beaver and turned out okay. Curious. Filled with childlike dreams of another world. What is she, Anna Green Gables all of a sudden? Hey! Cannot be changed. What did he want? Oops. I didn't know he knew Linda's mother. I thought she was killed in the Centaurian tribal war. It is true. But the Admiral knew her long before that. He made many expeditions into the desert in those years. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're John, describing the plot of Kung Fu. Who was Linda's father? You better get out of here. Oh, boy. We gotta disarm that satellite. Oh, yeah, I want to help. Let's keep going. You know, this makes no sense at all. Who ever heard of a doomsday machine with a fold lock top in it? Hey, hey, Joe, look, I found an instruction manual right there, see? Thanks. Cool. It says Isaac Asimov's Literary Doomsday Machine. It's an instruction manual. It must be over a thousand pages long. How typical. Literary Doomsday? Isn't that when your library finds exceed the price of the book? Uh, I thought it was uh, every time Jackie Collins makes it to the bestseller list. <laughs> now settle down, you goonheads. We got this Doomsday Machine to disarm, and, well, we got to check the manual. Let's see. It looks like it's translated from the Korean or something. They must have uh, subcontracted the satellite for him. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't get it. Asimov must have gone mad. Why would anyone want to make a doomsday machine? Well, he's probably mad because no one else is as smart as him, or else that L. Ron Hubbard has more followers than him. Well, didn't Asimov try to establish the Church of the Super Quiz once? No, oh, knock it off, you spinach shins. I got to read this manual. Step one. It will be very enjoyable for you to separate the ocular filter coupling of from the decapacitor, which is stout and yellow sometimes. Crow, you better scan this and give me the instructions. Got it. Brother. Okay, most very kindly, uh, find the looky switch, which is nice and sitting there with green label that leaves you singing. I think I got it. Okay, carefully disregard and do not do the very wrong thing or much confusion will result, tell me about it, with sparks, flowers, and loud report on some models. Blue Batman to CG detail omitted for clarity? This is really confusing. Who wrote this? Charlie Callis? Hey, oh, oh, wait, there's more. Uh, it says, uh, Clip uh, Redwire likes you best with firm hand and glad heart. Okay, I think that ought to do it. But first, clip the blue wire. Got you, scrawny man. Well, that's what it said. Oh, man, we got movies. Oh! Oh, my eyes. <laughs> you got cream. Oh. Okay. Hey. Seems like a nice looking gal. Are you chafing like a bear or is it just oh, I don't me? Know. It sounded like a bird call to me. Sounded like a girl screaming at a Come snake. On, in trouble. Hey, the snake pushed her into the river. Fortunately, I have my Johnny Rocket crossbow. Snake on a stick. Hey, look what's on through back. Cool. This will look great over the mantel. I can't believe this is a keeper. Hey, 
watch those hands. I wonder what you find in this. Look. She'll be perfect for my experiments. And Quincy will be so proud of me. Say, this hotel's got everything. I wonder where the game room is. Mountain goat. Well, I used I don't to be. Know she climbed up there. I think we missed her. I think maybe she's back here someplace. Wait a minute. Tracks. She's been right around here someplace. Like right where these tracks were made? Do, do you think she fell in? I mean, do the uh, Centaurians know how to swim? Dibs, dibs. Uh, let me drink champagne out of it, just to be sure. Look at the size of that thing. Well, I've Let's seen trees feet bigger long. than that. That's nothing. Let's get back to the ship. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. We've been pacing this studio for hours. When do we get some action happening? Sailor's hat. What's it all mean? All right, let's take five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, uh -uh, psych. <laughs> What's the matter, Bradley? This hike too much for you? Oh, no, Doc. I always enjoy a 40-mile walk on a lovely day like this. You ever see the movie Alive, the Donut Boy? You physical, you were 10 pounds overweight. Are you kidding, Doc? I've been on a diet for seven days. And so far, all I lost is a week. Good and one. Volunteer. And your self-respect sure. for that joke. Yeah, that's the story of my life. I'm always volunteering for something. I remember one time back at headquarters, I volunteered oh, for a karate course. They taught me all the chops, the head, the neck, the shoulders, the stomach, the whole thing there. The karate kicks. Now, who are you, and Donald O'Connor? Hi, Kiva! Hi! You know, I could watch that all day. Do that again, will you? And after completing the course, I became a karate expert. When did he become an idiot? <laughs> I went around breaking boards with my bare hands. The first time I saluted Admiral King, I almost knocked my brains out. Sure you didn't I succeed? I for this, this mission to Centaurus. And look where it got us. Good. But like you always told me, Lieutenant, where's your spirit of adventure? Oh, I left it in my oh, other that's pants. The thing. That's what makes all of this worthwhile, the adventure. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. All oh, the sheer thrill of it all. Perusing the planets, unifying the universe, galloping through the galactics. Shut, Shut up! The mission we had to the planet Yage, if I live to be normal. We landed our ship in the middle of the densest part of the jungle. And we were about 200 yards from the ship. When our Morty Gunty Yage appearing this week at the Blaine beach, Community Theater in tall, Shakespeare's King Lear. From head to toe, with fire and flame shooting out of all three nostrils. Well, I raised my laser gun. I Shut fired the up. activating mechanism. But the gun wouldn't work. Shut it was like certain death for all of us. Can't reach his mouth. Or something. I reached back and I grabbed a handful of yours. And I threw it right in the beast's face and killed it. Uh, just a minute, Brad. You reached back and grabbed a handful of what? Yours. A handful of yours. And I threw oh, it right okay. in the beast's face. Okay, Bradley, tell me. What's yours? Uh, I'll have a three-day pass, sir. So Bob Bob I, I, Stevens and I can find Bob a quiet Bob place. Bob I and we'll go ahead. You do. I would, you do. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, he'll be riding in the trunk on the way back to Earth. He's a real child of hell. I got to get a new log out here or something. Wilma 
Now you're up. Have you met Steve, my monkey? Well, you got some flaking there, oh, and you could use a henna. Pretty girl. Who are you? I am Tang. I'm not just for breakfast anymore. That's my favorite drink. It's, it's short for Australopithecus thing. Africanus. I am Centaurian. Tang is my favorite drink. You are Centaurian. We are Tang. Well, how did you get here? On this planet. It is my homeland. You were born here. Your mother was aboard the Cosmos 3. Hey, and your mother swims after there troop ships, survivors. lady. Survivors? Yes. Your mother and father. Where are they? Um, you're wearing them. I will take you to them. Uh, fresh out, but Where I've got the cava juice. Clothes wet. You fall in water. Oh, yes, I remember. Those serpents. I killed serpent. Here, I bring you this here. hot stick. You'll like it. Leave the shower curtain here. Oh, by the way, I did that totem pole just because I thought I was supposed to. How much per month for this? With the damage about it? Now, join me in my dance of death. He's not bad, except for a little Mama. freezer burn around the edges. It's Clarence Bird's eye. It's Lieutenant Anderson. He's not a centaurian. My father. Well, they're no bowling trophy. I must tell the Admiral about this. I must go back to the ship that brought me here. Do you know where the ship is, Tang? I know. I take you there. And then I'll get some pronouns. Meanwhile, back at the dry ice pool. What a smell. Smell. Oh, that's I don't just smell me. Anything. Yeah. The bottle like musky have a great secret weapon. Yeah, they can use it for deodorant. You rub it on, the smell stays, but you disappear. Good one. Boy, what a spot for a steam bath. Just cross the log and you're in the club. Hand me the rope. You could walk around. Too easy. Sure glad the prop boys laid this log out here for us. If the Wallenders can do it, we can do it. more nerve than I thought he had. Scott's a good man, Bradley. He has wonderful a bone structure, so great teeth, and a darling figure. Yeah, but what a miserable place to have to search. The best. Sure, he's right over there. The hazardous mission is like the mirror of truth. When you face it, you see your true self. Oh, shut up. What are you, Confucius? Just cross the dry ice and you shut up. Why don't you build a better bridge? <laughs> Wrong kind of engineers. Uh, you see, uh, we just Scared play out. with toy trains. Frankly, yeah. Doc, I don't think Alan better try it. I want to take the slack okay, out of that Chief. rope. Alan, you stay behind it. You little panty waist boy, beamer. if that was my kid, I'd whack him. I'm okay, Doc. If uh, you can make it, I can. Suit yourself. He's got a tequila. Let's go. He's got tequila?
easy. My blood pressure is just racing. Why didn't they just uh, go around right there? I'm coming too, Chief. Hey, now, I don't follow. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't Jinx. fall. Jinx. Jinx. Noonan. 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 Jinx. Noonan. Jinx. This chicken, chicken. Oh, shame. What a pity. Hot foot. It's a gander. Yes, it is. Well, I guess he's not in the club. Never did like him anyway. That's right. Lousy. That's what this whole mission is. That is locker. Lousy. What the hell are we trying to prove anyway? Searching a stinking nowhere planet for a bunch of survivors that may not exist? Hey, I got <laughs> Angelo to think of. Take it easy, Chief. Take it easy. You watch a man die like that and you say, take it easy? Yeah, I thought it was funny. Why? <laughs> you all right now, Chief? Yeah, thanks for not hitting me. Sorry. Something just happened to me. Got a little shook, I guess. You get it, Chief? Got a little shook. Dick Queen. No, we're almost there. Move on. Dark. Come on, son. I know how you're feeling. You see this shoulder? It's here if you need it. Idiot. Now, would you go back across the log and unhook the rope? That makes me hungry. Is he primordial soup yet? Now, where did we park? More of the same, old brother. Someone's got to have a lot of things. There we are. Fierce. Kind of sickening, isn't it? Nobody could have survived this crash. Bradley, you and the chief wait here. We can't be sure what we might find inside. You with me, Doc? Yeah, you two disposable characters wait here. like they turned that ship into a restaurant. I love these fern bars. Looks like an interstellar Denny's. It's great. Wow, they had more switches than we do. <laughs> Did you float an air biscuit or is that me? Yeah, hey, their doggy left all their bones here. That's the people you old. Oh. Nice wallet. That's his sternum. Don't touch style. it. I want to check every compartment in the ship. That's Bradley and the chief. Get on back here. Huh. It says, thou shalt not kill. Uh, that was in the other show. The clothing play. It says, Ahab was obsessed with the great white one. It's a well, there's a little girl down there. Well, the same situation down in the maneuvering room. The entire engineering crew. The maneuvering room? Don't you That's mean the all. bathroom? There's one thing that puzzles me, Doc. Fractions. Oh, the hatches left standing open. Mm -hmm. and, uh, looks like some of them have been forced. Kind of like your characterization. Oh, so someone else had searched through the ship. Yeah, something like that. We've accounted for all the five. There were five survivors. You mean that recorder still works after 18 years? Yeah, but it's on a track. Emergency power pack is as good as the data's installed. Listen to this. And now there are only three of us. I don't expect Sergeant Long to last more than a few days now. Long won't his last long. His caused loss of sight in both eyes. And his brain seems to have been damaged somehow. I'm also certain that my fever will soon overcome me. There are no 
No more drugs aboard the ship. This plan is totally dry, dude. Don't look to be scoring Cosmo nothing three. here. Year one, 74th day. That's the last report. 74 long days. Watching the sky. Waiting for us. Waiting for death. Nice speech, Jim. Anderson knew it would take us 18 years to get back. The important thing is, he knew we would. Thank God we did. You think there might be a lion up in the mountains? It's possible. Jim's constipated. Hey, Chief, what's wrong? What's wrong with him, Doc? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Oh, my God, how horrible to be killed by a plush toy. Tarantula, don't make any quick moves. Doc, keep everything still. May I have your laser gun? Yes, sir. Kind of late now, isn't it? Careful, Scott, he sees you. He can spring that far. We rigged him that way. Look out, he's going to jump. Bring the chase down. Hopping spider of Rylos 4. Well, I guess he's really an angel now. He yep. died more from shock than the poison. Little lady, yes. Quick we diagnosis. Let's go. Well, don't everybody be so sad. Uh, Eddie, money, really two tickets to, to paradise. That's about it. Send the Franco family. family. I don't end? think you'd like it. Two of them did. They murdered Ross. They'll hit the Admiral pretty hard. Yeah. Hit them pretty hard too, Doc. Wrecked them. Damn near killed them. And so Johnny Long Torso and his industrial band of bad boy spacefaring pals step out into the cold air of Central Park. Shower curtain. Oh, yes, Terry. Crazy woman, I offer her something to drink. She you thinks it's my name all of a sudden. What the? How long have your mother and father been gone, Terry? You mean Maybe frozen? I was child. Then who taught you to speak? How to live? Mother teach. She lived until she held me five back in the third before. grade. Do you live here all alone? Yes, alone. If you don't count my twenty-seven are there any monkeys. Other people on this planet? Yes, there are others. Savages who hate and kill. They do not want Tang to live in their country. Oh, you mean Crash, Orange, Goofy, Grape, Lefty Lemon? That whole gang? Only enemies. But there is room for many people to live here. Why should they object? Well, this is the high rent district, and you know how people get. They are primitive men. The they producer? Do not know how to think. No, these men are different. Oh, the executive producer. Natch. Fear men who are different. Oh, Natch. 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 My name is Lucky. Tang. I'm not just for breakfast anymore. Can I call you Ovaltine? You I'll drink to that. Who undressed me? <clears throat> Linda's clothes wet. Well, I undressed. <clears throat> nice tag, Tang. Did not mean to hurt you. I can love only through pain. Do not be afraid of me. I am not afraid of you, Tang. 
Bang, shang, a lang, tang. Wang, bang, thank you, tang. The weather started getting rough. The tang and she were tossed. Dean will get uh, Liddy and the plumbers to do all the dirty work. Hey, Crow, sounds like one of the more boring episodes of Prairie Home Companion, huh? Yeah, let's get it on tape. Canyon's the last. We'll place them in the upper end of this canyon. Probably a cave high on the cliffs. Well, they'd be fairly safe. I know what you mean. Admiral. Do you seriously believe any of them are still alive? Maybe I do. I don't know what I think of that. Well, then why haven't they used the radio? But continue the tape report beyond 74 days. He has a point, Admiral. Even if we find nothing but the radio. Oh, no, it took like this. Hmm. At least we'd be sure. Admiral King. Are the dead worth more lives than the living? What's a dead man other than a live man without any life? Sergeant Allen, the chief, Linda. I'm not convinced that Linda is dead either. Oh, no, 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 no. Might possibly be a captive. A captive? Addison Wilson said the serpent was killed by metal shaft. Possibly an arrow. Might be primitive men on this planet. Men without pocket well, squares. Is possible. Hey, did you we just, just get back to the dentist or something? Yet. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go out and find out. Uh, you just get a shot I'll go along with that, sir. J.D. Good night, <clears throat> Is it my breath? Oh, Captain Crunch. Comfort ring. Help me out of this awful jam now. Show them! Yeah. Go, Annette, go. How'd you get that x ray machine to sound that good? The Space Samba. Wow, she'd be perfect for your experiments. little girl is trapped down there, and all you can do is dance. It was murder. Uh, the sexual harassment laws are a lot looser in the future, I think. You know you love it. Uh, yeah, but uh, not when we take Six inches, come on. All right, break it up. Mr. Bradley, didn't you ever read the regulations covering shipboard romances? Of course I did, but <laughs> this started a long time before we came aboard. <laughs> I can only read Braille. You get back home. Oh, you find yourself with a busted ensign. A busted ensign? Now, Lieutenant, we all know how painful you that can be. You would your rack on a sweet little junior officer like this just because you're jealous. Bradley, there are some men who can send me right into orbit. You couldn't even get me onto the launching pad. Yikes. Nice tag. Everybody. Mr. Scott! Oh, you're over there. I didn't look. Why isn't my field gear ready? Bradley! Yes, sir. Where's Mr. Scott? Why isn't the search party ready to leave? Uh, Mr. Scott left a little while ago. Mr. Scott leave. Sir, took Doc and Harris with him. He, he said you wouldn't let anybody else go. Oh. He, he said that, well, Those were your orders, weren't they, Admiral? Yes. Hmm. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Has he reported in yet? Where are Bumpus' dog? He said he would investigate the waterfall area and then report to you. Oh, no. Let me know the moment you hear from him. Thank you, Betty. Veronica, Jughead. Hey, you know something? He didn't tell Scott, did he? He was going to go himself. Yes, I know. The commander told me about it last night. He was very high. Man, we've been walking around this studio for months. We've gone too far. We're on the Indian set now. Turn back. And we took this area thoroughly. He isn't here, Admiral. 
We're going to head for the cliff now. I'll let you know if we find anything. Yes, sir. But your bath is ready, sir. Doc, what kind of metal would you say this is? Some kind of steel alloy? Wrong, Made from wreckage but of thanks for playing. Three. What are you driving at? Well, there's only one kind of device that shoots an arrow like this. Uh, a bow. A crossbow. Maybe a Centaurian crossbow. Maybe. Doc, we might be on the trail of the very man who murdered Captain Ross. Let's go check out the cave set, you slug. Hello, world. Peter Pan and Wendy. Hey, get me, I'm a wood nymph. My name isn't Tang, it's Puck. Oh, I meant to do my work today, but the wildflowers beckoned and what could I do but answer their call? Sweetly called by the string loop, and I came. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. I remember this place, Tang. So lovely here, and so peaceful. This all flows yes. from the other huts upstream. I here, here I find Linda. Come, we must see. I don't know if we want to watch this what? next part. We're going to get that I, I kind of do. Okay. No, you better oh. come on. No, it's the green wire, Joel. Definitely the green. Look, who's holding the screwdriver here anyway? I give up. Who? Oh, that's enough from the peanut gallery. Thanks a lot, you two. Oh, heck, Joel. Go ahead and clip the blue wire. It's just a doomsday machine. If it goes up, it's not like we're going to be around to experience oblivion. Well, by oblivion, do you mean experiential oblivion or phenomenological oblivion? Hmm, interesting distinction. Let's define our term, shall we? Well, Kierkegaard would Listen, always say that... Listen, you screwhead, you'd better knock it off or I'll brain you both with my ball-peen hammer and I'll knock it off. Hmm, mm, interesting reaction to a logically defined supposition. I think Camus would have uh, theorized differently Oh, listen, under... Mr. Smart Alec Guy, what, what wire would Camus cut? Well, uh, he'd cut the blue one, I think, and then if he was still around after that, he'd cut the green one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Ah, oh, the, the Samuel Beckett the... method. Uh, Joel, you're playing dice with the universe. I hope you realize that. Oh, welcome. welcome. You have passed, passed through the first three thresholds, thresholds of the Ice Gasm Literary, literary satellite. satellite. And to the disarmed voter, enjoy, enjoy the consequences. consequences. Remember, this and all literary work the last century of the sole property of Isaac Asimov and many affiliates. Thank you for intruding. You have five seconds. Oh, quick, Joel, cut every wire. That's not going to work. It needs an access code. Uh, uh, try Ego. Uh, sideburn. Uh, I'll try iRobot. I'm, I'm sorry, the correct entry would have been copyright. You now have six nanoseconds to realize the consequences. You know, well, once when I was so annotating the pen, I was saying, I did have the inevitability of quantum thermodynamics. That's right. Huh? This cockamamie satellite turned us all into duplicate Isaac Asimov. Hey, do you think it's a conspiracy? Oh, no, I, uh, t I covered the conspiracy topic in my 10-volume history of assassinations and coups. This is terrible, you guys. Oh, I don't know. At least now I'll have something to write about. You know, I've been thinking about annotating the Manhattan phone directory. Oh, look, it's commercial science. That'll fit nicely into my volume on the effects of advertising on the human psyche. I was just well, thinking about my Kim Allen was over the other day, and, and, day and we were talking about the all information, you know. We'll be able to stack our... I still and so Kennedy, after the Cuban like Missile were, Crisis, didn't really have a clue what was going on. He knew that uh, the Khrushchev was certainly going to marry there. Uh, hmm? well, oh. I have never seen such beautiful food. On Centaurus, at the colony, and on my ship, we have only synthetic food to eat. I know. Mother speak of this before she leave on long journey beyond. She's I in the I cave, like Tang. Frozen. This much better food. They're uh, little Debbie cakes. I uh, gathered them from the bear cave. They're fit for a king. Here, king, here, king. Ba boom, zing. You have much to learn. Yeah, they're uh, one third less calories than regular mangoes. You flunk third grade, though.
<laughs> uh, turn it around. Now the other way. Oh, brother. This is Tico, my hungry friend. Well, he's still mad about the whole evolution thing. Let me show you how to open these things. Beautiful, look at this. So I grow a pelt and crawl up on a rock? Mm. This is even better than the other. The other what? Can I have another banana leaf? Come, he comes. Cinda not hurt you. She knew friend. Come on, show her your red Linda. butt like at the zoo. You are a good friend. Give it a kiss. <laughs> Here, Tico. Nice yeah. babe you got there, Tang. Gotta go back to my trainer now. <laughs> Now Tang's really in love. Oh, now he's gonna play some of the world's most loved melodies, a la Zem Fear. Let me amuse and cajole your species, Mata. It's Peter and the Wolf and the Monkey. And Ted and Alice. Get me, I'm the master of the pan flute. Linda like my friend Tico? Yes, Tang. And the monkey, too? Linda like Tang's food? Yes. Tang and Tico, they're cops. Linda like Tang? Well, yeah, but I, I also like other beverages, like high C. Hey, wait a minute. Whose legs are whose there? Somebody's got frog legs. Oh, I'm gonna go spank myself. I will have to return to my friends on the ship. They will be worried for me. I'm going to have to return to my full shower. You like friends on ship more than Tang. Yeah, I guess I do. Why? What do you say is not true, Tang? I love you. Come on, help me with the present. No. Uh, Tang's going to take a powder. Wait, Tang is a powder. <laughs> Tang will settle to bottom. Must stir. You think Tang falling in water? Very funny. Maybe this funny too. Yes, and Joe's gives it a six. Nah, she didn't come out of her tuck in time. Say no evil. Well, maybe just a little. Yeah. This week in the Inquirer, Tang's recipe for love. Lots of good food and his water baby. That's what I call a complete breakfast. Tang, toast, milk, and fruit. And booty. Hey, get out of the acid bath. There's so much to see, so much to do. Your ship. Hey, I can see your house from here. So yeah. beautiful here. 
And it's not even real. Oh, it's just ones like this. What is it, Hank? They will take Vinto away. And Tang too. Actually, it's new and improved, Tang. We'll go to a together. No. Mother and father are here. This is my homeland. This is Bentor's home. Yes, Tank. Tank's this never heard of a one-night stand. But I have to tell the Admiral. Why tell us? He's my friend. He's like a father. <laughs> the only one I've ever known. Ah, uh, Lolita, huh? Like your father. We will go to him. The frozen dad? It's the monkeys. Get out of there. Scamper. Jesus. They're too busy spearing to put anybody down. Taekwondo. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are the planet's fiercest warriors. Pathetic. Hey, everybody, I'm Bruce Lee. Looks like the family from uh, It's About Time. Lucky my chick's here, man. Who's fighting a bunch of Sonny Bono look-alikes? Help! Help! Linda! Linda! Oh, typical response. I don't understand it, so I better shoot it. Oh! Hey, he's giving her a shot with a corkscrew. Darn jocks always taking my girl. I'm gonna leave this darn chess club. Why was she trying to go back, Doc? I'm sure that Scott would have found him by now if the wound was really critical. Don Marceau. Look, take it from me, David. If that boy can be found, Scott will find him. Bradley just reported in. They've lost the trail. Stopped suddenly at the edge of a cliff. There was a note. It said, Ah! Gee, what do you think that means? The volcano's going to erupt. This valley won't be safe. Radio Mr. Scott returns the ship. Is it my breath? It is his breath. What? Try once more, Junk. No, try something that means something. I believe it's hopeless, Commander. Admiral King wants us to report back to the ship. He's afraid old Smokey over there is going to blow its top and shake the walls down to the canyon. No, you're thinking of the big bad wolf. Right, let's go. Okay, I just stay here and then I be here if you need me. Why, Chang? Hey, it's Cliff Robertson. Hi, I'm a mountain. <laughs> Stupid. What are the chances of those idols falling over? Billy Idol? Uh oh stock footage and lots of it coming at us. Sorry, sir. Hey, what were you doing in the washing machine? You did the best All those chicks coming along hatched yet? Scott, repair the ship for departure. Yes, sir. I 
hate you. I hate all of you. Gee, don't say hi. Sergeant Evans, through to stations. Yep. Attention all personnel. Ascent stations. Ascent stations. Raise the ramp. Raise the ramp. Hey, I've outside. got a leash, pal. Bingo! Bueno! More stock footage. Hit the deck. What is that? Woe them to the ground, planet most woof we. Thank you. Oh, I hit my butt. It's all hot and it hurts and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh, let me fall down one more time. Guys, I got a feeling it's callback time. There's a girl down that well. But the chicks are done. Is anyone in the washing machine? We're staying anyway. This is no time for push-up, you dolt. I think I've got my pair of action slacks on. Linda! Linda! Hey, I can't finish my jumble puzzle. Look, you get back to the ship. That's an order. We're both going back. I can't leave her here. Then let can't. go of me. Leave me here. I have to find her. Don't you understand? She's my responsibility. She's all I have. Linda's my daughter. Uh oh. Linda. Jeez, talk about Deus Ex Machina. Lollapalooza. Looks like the land of Dairy Queen. Fire up the walk. Dinner's ruined again. Hey, look out! The styrofoam is on fire. I'm back. Hi, girl. right here at this pool of filth. This is great. Ooh. She can meet his frozen parents. really changed the place. Uh, the monkey moved in. I hope that doesn't bother you. 
why is this called Planet of the Prehistoric Women? It makes no sense. All right, Sergeant. Stand by, vertical gravitator. Boy, they really got a lot done on that planet. Hold it, Scott. They're alive, Admiral. Linda and the boy, look. Attention, all personnel. Attention. Attention. Oh, Linda hi, is alive. Elvis. I'd like to see some of my hits, and then I'm going down to the galley to have some peanut butter and nana sandwich. Stand by, men. You too, Elvis. Well, Mr. Scott, let's get about going home. You mean we're not going back to the Admiral? No, we'll not go back. Not today. They'll be happy here. They belong here. They belong to each other. Who are you, Chuck Willery? They'll create a world of their own. I'm feeling loud, proud, and brass people from their homeland. Except for the Master Ray. So you're right, you know this bastard. Activate controls. Yes, sir. The Admiral's a different man. Yes. I know our fare wasn't set up in this film, but let's be part of the Loose Ends Festival anyhow. <laughs> oh, look, you can see my house. Drive me to the mall. We got a planet to populate, honey. I'm already bored, Tang. Scott, make an entry in the ship's log. Move us, dog. This one is retiring from the third planet of the Solaris system. As this planet was here to four unknown. We talk real fast, like you know what you're planet. talking about, yeah. From this day forward, the third planet of Solaris will be known as the Blue Planet. We designated planet Earth. Earth? Oh, come on, who oh. made you God? Oh, man of all from Tang, right. We better get out of here. That means we better my great, go. great grandmother was really, really hot. Was she? We gotta go figure out a way to change her. You ever pick her? These, uh, oh, these Isaac Asimov sideburns come off. They're just taped on. They're phony. Oh, that's what it means to be Isaac Asimov, I guess. Yeah, but he probably already thought of that. Yeah, instead of a doomsday machine, I guess it kind of turned out to be a dork's day machine. Well, it could be worse. Oh? Could have been a Doris day machine. <laughs> oh. oh, good. <laughs> come on, you guys. It's time to read some letters here. Okay, Cambot, let's, uh... Oops, you lost your head. Oops. That was my skull. Oh, that's too bad. That's okay. All right. Here we go. Cam, I'll put this up on the screen. Uh, MST 3000, I'm writing a response to you guys. And one episode in specific, I believe, Robo Holocaust was the name. The one in which a man possesses valuable knowledge and was transformed into a vegetable-like being because of his inability to cooperate. Avocado boy. Yep. Yeah. And we had a contest uh, to see who uh, could come up with a name for the avocado guy. And here's his uh, entry. He's the winner, by the way. Here, he gave us four. Skip the couch potato. Let's have a picture of that guy, Kamba. You call me? A man from P-R-O-D-U-C-E, a weebolo named Chlorophyll, and the eighth wonder of the guacamole. So, <laughs> that's from um, James S. Callstrom, cool. Bloomington. The Thanks winner of the brainstorm. Yeah, he won the brainstorm. Thanks all who entered that one, by the way. And uh, here's this next one. Uh, dear one. sir or bot, one lonely, depressing Saturday night, I happened to switch to channel 49 and found MST 3000. It was love at first laugh. I was instantly hooked. Now my life has meaning. That's pretty sad, really. Anyway, it's a great show. I've seen it, to, shown it to several of my friends, and they say they all like it. Even my wife likes it, and she is not an SF fan. What's SF mean? Uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. Anyway, the last one here is from a father and daughter. Uh, Do they dance team? too? I don't know. We would like information about the fan club. We would also like to know if there's a special club group for Tom Servo. You betcha. Wow. Ever since his head exploded, trying to think of something good to say about the bride vanishes, we realize he has a rare and special honesty. It's good that you didn't ask for good comments about Project Moonbase. The consequences would be unthinkable. That's from Kenneth J. I shudder at the thought. Yeah, Kenneth J. Plotkin and Sarah E. Plotkin, the Plotkin family. 
bell ringer. Well, family that's it. it. Tom Server, you want to give him the mailing address? Sure. Bob, put it up on the screen there. Love to. It's the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club. P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. All right, that's the end of the experiment. What do you think, sir? I think I'll file this thing for you, as I always seem to do. I like working for you, Clay, because you're a really neat guy. Well, I think you should file this, Larry. Until next time, pasty boy.